Our God and Father, we thank you this evening. It's in you we live and move and have our being. We ask now that for the moments that remain, you would inundate this place with your presence and cause every heart to be both charged, challenged, and ultimately changed. These blessings we ask in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. And every glad heart said amen. amen. Give God the best praise you have tonight. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Before you take your seats, turn to either your left or your right and let them know the devil's in trouble tonight. You can be seated after you share that. I don't know what he's up to, but I want you to know he is already defeated. Touch your neighbor and tell him your praise is your weapon. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God and the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of our great king. Both delighted and excited, blessed and impressed to be here on this evening, the Apostolic Faith Fellowship International. I am grateful to God for this opportunity to serve this church, and I want to certainly honor God for being here tonight. I want you to agree with me that you thank God for life, health, and strength. Every time your chest rises and falls, somebody ought to tell him thank you. Every time you can put one foot in front of another without the assistance of a wheelchair, a walker or a cane you got something to thank God for every time you can bring food to your mouth without a healthcare professional assisting you you owe God a praise glory to God go ahead and give your testimony tell somebody I'm glad to be in the service one more time well you might as well finish it tell somebody he didn't have to let me live oh, you do know that's the only reason why you're alive is because he lets you i don't care how many miles you walk a day i don't care how many herbs you take i said he lets you live for in him we live move and have our been hallelujah to god I've been to more funerals this year than I care to attend, but none of them were mine. My God, tell somebody I've been to more funerals this year than I care to tell them, but none of them were mine. Thank you, Jesus. So we bless God tonight for life. Help me celebrate this great man of God who sits in the governance of this church, blessed for, as he stated, decades of relationship, watched his life over the years, man of God of the first magnitude. Let's honor our presiding bishop, the honorable bishop Johnson tonight. Thank God for you, sir. You stand as a bulwark in the apostolic faith. Let's also praise God for Bishop C.L. Hardy, your assistant presiding bishop. Bless you, sir. To the board of bishops of this great church, we're delighted to 
being amongst these great giants and generals in the kingdom of our Lord. I am very blessed tonight and honored to have with me and accompanying me tonight Vice Presiding Bishop of the Bible Church Worldwide in the person of Apostle John Bennett on the way from Durham, North Carolina. God bless you, sir. Glad to have you with us on tonight. Let's bless God as well for my great friend and brother, Apostle Dave Lund Carr. Give God praise for him as well, being with us on tonight. Amen. I am extremely blessed tonight to have my son, my namesake. Would you help me bless God for Elder Michael Rogers, Jr.? Bless you, son. As I came in and began to greet the men of God, I was so blessed to see our friend and brother, uh, who is certainly an ecumenical ambassador in the apostolic faith in the person of Bishop David Maxwell, from the Church of our Lord Jesus Christ, and those who accompany him, we, we thank God, and certainly, sir, we agree. Uh, Jesus prayed, Father, make them one, even as we are one. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father who's in us all and through us all and above us all, and one hope of his calling. And where there's unity, there is strength, and I believe the time will come where this world will see the unity of the church. Can you say amen? I thank God for his goodness. You've been in worship all day long. It's not my intention to hold you, but touch somebody and tell them, has God got a word for you? Thank God for these great men of God. I don't want to, amen, start as I'll be here all night, but I do thank God for, for good relationship. Help me bless the Lord for my good friend, Elder, our bishop, the honorable bishop, Gerald Anderson tonight, yes, and that we, we've had relationship for a long time, and uh, amen, we'll be with him on next month, amen, looking for God to bless us, and I thank God for my newfound friend, uh, the Bishop John Thompson, God bless him tonight, uh, being here, just, it's good to see men, it's good to be in good company, um, would you tonight pray for me as we go? Uh, immediately into the word of the Lord. I'm going to ask that you, that love of the Lord, would you open the kingdom's constitution, your holy Bibles, um, whether it's on your devices or you have the written word before you, uh, to the gospel of Luke, chapter number 13. Luke's gospel, chapter number 13. And when you, and when you have navigated your way to Luke's gospel chapter number 13 would you stand to your feet for the reading of the holy scripture Luke's gospel chapter 13 if you have it in your bibles indicate the same by saying amen, amen. there were present at that season some that told him of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Are those 18 upon whom the tower in Siloam fell and slew them, think ye that they were sinners above all men that dwelt in Jerusalem? I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. He spake also this parable, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year. 
till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit well, and if not, then after that, thou shalt cut it down. And the people said, Amen. You may be seated. For just a few moments this evening, I'd like to reason with you from this subject. Working with negatives to get a better picture. Touch your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, God is working with your negatives to get you a better picture. Life's miserable, melancholy moments cause us to reach a place where God is no longer an exclamation point, but he becomes a question mark. No wonder it's the rabbi Abraham Joshua Herschel who sadly but sagaciously stated that we all come to worship through questions. There are dark, depressive, and dismal days of disappointment where, beloved, life makes absolutely no sense. I just need a few folks to agree. Uh, and during that time, it seems almost impossible to emerge out of your circumstance with a praise for God. I come to tell you, yes, it, it's a blessing uh, when you're in those wonderful moments where God is an exclamation point. He woke me up this morning, exclamation point, he saved my soul and baptized me with the Holy Ghost, exclamation point, he healed my body, he gave me the finances that I needed to come out of indebtedness, exclamation point, but I come to tell you tonight that honesty begs me to take the witness stand and testify that there are days where you want to know where in the world is God. Uh, yes, uh, it was in Shakespeare's Macbeth that he concludes that life is a tale told by an idiot full of fury and sound signifying nothing. It was Dr. Martin Luther King uh, who after seeing those four girls killed in a bombed church in Birmingham, Alabama, he says, and I quote, that life is a long and desolate corridor with no exit signs. Well, maybe you can relate to Shakespeare and you can't relate to Dr. Martin Luther King, but I come to tell you, I don't care how big your Bible is, all of us will get to a place where you begin to question what's going on with God in your life. The Bible says that Gideon is approached by the angel and the angel says, hey Gideon, thou art a mighty man of valor and the clap back from Gideon is that if I am such a mighty man of valor, why? are these things occurring to my people and I want you to understand tonight that though we are here in holy convocation some of us came with questions wanting to know since God is who he says he is why is my life in such derision I 
come to tell somebody you're in good company tonight because God is not intimidated by your questions. Uh -huh. I hear the Bible say that even the prophet Jeremiah there in the 8th chapter of the book named after his prophecy begins to want to know and query is there no balm in Gilead is there no physician there then why is the health of the countenance of my people fallen and I come to tell you tonight you got a right to inquire of the God that you serve why is it that things are the way they are I just tell folks if you're going to ask questions then prepare for an answer Thank you, Jesus. I hear uh, somebody saying, why in the world should I even question God? Because, you know, you grew up in the church I grew up in that taught you you don't ever question God. Well, I come to tell you that you're in the right place at the right time because even Jesus Christ, who is God in the flesh, while hanging, <laughs> hallelujah, <laughs> uh, between the sixth and ninth hour cries out and says Eli, Eli Lama Sabbathany my God, my God why? Why hast thou forsaken me? Just touch a neighbor and tell him I just want to know why thank you Jesus and I come to tell you tonight that God's got a way of showing you why I hear the text now giving us to understand as they are complaining to him about the acts of Pilate that he has mingled the blood of the saints with the holy sacrament and sacrifices and I hear him tell them do you think Think you're any better than the people who have been murdered I come to tell you no he goes on to tell them about those who had a tower in Siloam fall down on them and he says to them and I quote are you any better than those who were slain and killed by the falling of that tower he says no but if you don't repent you will be just like them in essence Jesus is trying to tell all of us that none of us are exempt from pain many are the afflicted afflictions of the righteous but hold on the Lord delivers us out of them all look at your neighbor and tell them just like you got in it God's gonna bring you out of it y'all ain't saying nothing turn to your neighbor and tell them just like you got in it God's gonna bring you out and soon tonight I must go and register the fact that we have all dealt with a myriad of unfortunate circumstances I, I think now it ought to be uh, stated that if you have been saved in a length of time you ought to have an arm's length uh, of problematic situations that you can look at uh, and some of you praise God will agree with me that you didn't have this kind of stressfulness until you decided to make Jesus your choice. I come to tell you that the devil will make you feel as if the God you serve has forgotten about you or that your salvation is what becomes a problem but the devil is a liar. Touch your neighbor and tell him my life now is sweet and my joy is complete because I'm saved and it doesn't matter what I go through hallelujah to God as long as I know that my name is written in the Lamb's book of life for if in this life alone you have hope you have all men most miserable I know there ain't nobody preaching about the second coming anymore because they want you to get used to being here they're talking about new homes and new cars but I got a witness I believe out there that somebody's living to live again somebody knows that if this earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved I got another building not made with hand I shall fall 
asleep someday and from this earth shall pass away but my soul shall reach a better land when I wake up in glory I will sing redemption story yes touch your neighbor tell him I'm living to live again Oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. I never will forget uh, a situation occurred not too long ago. A friend of mine out of Houston, Texas, a pastor told me he was traveling on his way back home and he had a detour flight uh, that caused him to stop over in San Francisco. Uh, on his way to the gate, he saw one of his favorite uh, and former members. Uh, it was a young man by the name of Jamal. Uh, and Jamal uh, always carried with him a 35 millimeter camera. He was a fanatic, uh, as it were, a about photography he said to Jamal how you doing son talked to him for a few moments and noticed he didn't have his camera he said son where is your camera he said pastor you don't want to know I've been through so much since I've seen you last he said number one my father gave me that camera and since I spoke to you he's died now and it grieves my heart to know that he's gone from me he said but what happened was I I was crossing the street, uh, uh -huh, light green, and then came a man barreling through the red light. Uh, he almost hit me, but in his almost hitting me, forced me uh, uh -huh, and pushed me back. He said the camera flew off of my neck and landed and crushed uh, itself into pieces. Uh, he went on to talk about uh, the fact that the man not only almost hit him but went on and hit a little girl uh, he said that the little girl had to be rushed to the hospital because her life was in jeopardy I'm trying to tell you sometimes woeful situations will happen and it's not even your fault and the devil will make you believe that God has been on mute and God is silent but I came all the way from Virginia to tell you when you don't hear anything God is up to something huh? do you hear what I tell you apostolic faith fellowship God wants you to know huh? the longer it takes the bigger the blessing huh? I'm almost where I need to be huh? touch your neighbor and tell them neighbor hang on in there huh? God's about to turn this thing around. Did you hear what I said? I need somebody to understand. Just like Mary, I hear the Lord speaking to Mary through the angel Gabriel, saying to this young virgin, Hail, thou art highly favored. Would y'all help me preach tonight? Touch somebody and tell them you are highly favored. You're not just favored uh, but you are highly favored uh, I don't care what your bank account says uh, I told you you're highly favored uh, I don't care what you see in the mirror when you look uh, you are highly favored uh, did you hear what I said uh, touch your neighbor and tell him you've been highly favored uh, so you go and tell the devil uh, say what you want to say uh, I am blessed in the city I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed in my basket. I'm blessed in my store. The fruit of my body is blessed. Did you hear what I said? My Bishop Rogers, why are you referring to a scripture about Mary? Don't we usually read that around Christmas time? Well, God told me to tell you, get ready. Because it's about to be Christmas in June. July. Did you hear what I said? I hear the Lord saying, That which you have conceived is of the Holy Ghost. Stop blaming the devil on the birthing pains that you're experiencing now. Because you're about 
to bring forth a miracle. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Touch your neighbor, tell him, neighbor, that's all you're dealing with is bathing pains. And I've never seen a woman deliver without some pain. I just come to tell somebody, be steadfast, unmovable. You tell the devil, give me all the pain you want. The more pain, the more pushing. You don't hear what I'm saying. I dare somebody to give God a praise right now. Yes. Oh, glory to God. Why did you tell us to praise God, Bishop? Because the Holy Ghost just instructed me to tell you. You're one praise away from your turnaround. I wouldn't let a preacher tell me that and keep my mouth closed. I said you're one praise away from your miracle. Open your mouth and Give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I got to get to my point and sit down. The text goes on to say, Jesus sets them up for a parabolic lesson. He says, and I quote, there was a man that owned a vineyard of fig trees. God, I thank you for this. He said the problem was it was a figless fig tree. Look at somebody and tell them there's something wrong with that picture. How do you have a figless fig tree? And that's what the devil desires to do to the saints. He wants to make us unproductive. And the vine dresser is now trying his best to preserve. The owner of the vineyard says, cut it down. It's taking up space. It's no longer useful. But I heard the vine dresser say, give it one more year and I'm about to dance behind this pulpit because I heard God say when everybody gave up on you give them one more year God I thank you for this you can sit there if you want to but I'm going to praise him now because I messed up time and time again but his mercy endures forever he said give it one more year he said let me dig around it and let me fertilize it touch your neighbor tell him neighbor cause you got a whole lot of dirt on you don't mean you're buried it just means you're planted like a tree planted by the reservoir rivers of water I shall not be moved I gotta quit here now but touch a neighbor, tell them neighbor, in order to grow, you're going to have to have some dirt on you. Oh, I'm getting ready to go there now. Not only did he dig around in the dirt, but the Bible said he put dumb, fertilizer, stinky stuff. Oh, oh God, I thank you. Touch your name and tell me, oh, you're going to have some dirt on you before you leave out of here. You're going to have some stinky stuff before you leave out of here. But the next time you see dumb throwers, the next time you see haters, tell them thank you. Because the stuff you put on me is the stuff that made me grow. Oh, hallelujah to God. Touch your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, God is working on your negatives. Did you hear what I said? If your enemies knew what they were doing, they would have left you alone. But you can tell them like Joseph, you meant it for my evil. Praise the Lord, but God, 
Set this thing up for my good. Look at your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, God is turning this thing in your favor. I wish I had time to preach like I want to. But tell your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, God is working on your negatives. I know you feel like negative things ought to leave you alone. But God told me to tell you, it takes negatives to bring out a better picture. I come to tell you, apostolic faith, fellowship international, you're a smart church, just like your presider. And I know somebody says, Rogers, you ain't going to leave us without telling us what happened to Jamal and his camera. I'm so glad you asked. Jamal went back to the broken pieces of his camera. And would you believe the camera was broken? But inside the broken pieces were the negatives. He had the negatives developed. And when he had the negatives developed, that man who ran by him and ran over that child somewhere between the camera coming off his neck, the shutter hit. So they got a picture of the hit and run driver. What are you saying, Rogers? If you hold your peace, the Lord will fight your battle. Stay us. Stay us, Lord. I got a quit here. But tell somebody God is working with your negatives to bring out a better picture. For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Say yes, Lord, I come to tell you, be not dismayed, whatever betimes, God will take care of you beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. I came all the way from Virginia to tell somebody your negatives are going to show a better picture. Yes, sir. Look at somebody and tell neighbor. Watch God turn it. Tears in the joy. Sorrow in the gladness. Poverty in the wealth. Sickness in the health. Can I prophesy? Touch your neighbor to a man. If the devil had any sense, he should have left you alone. Yeah. But he ain't got no sense. So I tell him, go ahead. Do what you gotta do. But greater. He goes to my. Is he that's within me. Than he. That's within the world. Look at your neighbor. Tell him, neighbor. Don't ever let the devil. Steal your identity. Tell somebody and tell them I was saved before I went through it. And I'll be saved when I come out of it. Tell somebody I was anointed before I went through my hell. And I'll be anointed when I come out. Glory to God. Now I know some of you are too saved to watch anything cinematic. Pray my strength in the Lord that I might be an overcomer. But one day I sat down and watched something. You're praying for me, Bishop Johnson. Called Creed. Thank you, sir. Creed 1 and 
two. In Creed one, a young man by the name of Adonis took up his father's trade as a boxer who was Apollo Creed, the nemesis of Rocky. And I come to tell you, say yes, I come to tell you, they said to Adonis, you can't do this, but he convinced Rocky to train him. Touch your neighbor, tell neighbor, whoever is against you is just training you for something greater. Did you hear what I said? We on Creed 2. Now, the man who killed his daddy in the ring had a son and he's fighting the son of the man who killed his daddy his daddy's enemy son knocks him down and I'm screaming at the screen get up get up he manages before the count of ten to stagger his way up Maxwell the referee grabs him by both of his hands and he said something profound he said what is your name cause until you know your name you can't get Oshaba back in the fight I come to tell you never forget who you are touch somebody to the neighbor I am the head and not the tail I am above only and not beneath tell somebody you better remember who you are I'm on my way to my seat but look at somebody and tell them I don't care how ugly the negative is Then I'm not talking. I ain't talking about the pictures. Y'all taking of me right now on those devices. But I'm talking about the old school. 35 millimeter. You gotta pull the film out. And then Anderson, you gotta take it to a place called a dark room. Somebody wants to know where you are. Cause it's dark all around you but touch your neighbor tell me you can't be developed until you get in an ocean till you get in a dark place God God send me here tonight to tell somebody you're in a dark place right now but weeping endures for an ocean a night help me say John Come in the morning, find five people, don't stop till you get the five, and tell them the dark place is giving light, go and tell them the dark place is giving light, I said the dark place is giving light, I said the dark place is giving light, there shall be light in the evening time, say say Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor I could dance right now Cause I just heard The best news I heard all year That all of my negatives Are about to turn positive hey! Wait a minute Y'all ain't going to dance without me. I feel it in your feet, y'all are not going to leave me out here.
at your neighbor and tell him, neighbor, you got to see it like God sees it. Now, you know who sees like God sees? You're going to be shocked when I tell you this. Touch your neighbor and tell them, neighbor, your doctor sees like God sees. Tell them your nurse sees like God sees. Tell them your medical specialist sees like God sees. The best news you can get from your doctor is that it came back negative. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Touch your neighbor, tell your neighbor. It came back negative. Yeah. I feel a holy ghost in here. I feel like dancing. I know you wanted to be positive, but positive is bad and negative is good. I found three people. I found three people telling it's all good. It's all good. It came back negative. I feel a prophetic I feel a prophetic anointing on me here touch your neighbor and tell them neighbor I don't know what the doctor told you and I don't know what the test results are I don't know what the doctor told you and I don't know what the test results are but the prophet said it's coming back negative yes whose report will you believe we shall believe the report of the Lord his report says I am healed his report says victory look at your neighbor one more time and tell him neighbor God is working with your negatives to bring out a better picture somebody clap your hands open your mouth and give God praise